Hello and welcome to this video and in this video we will introduce the idea of a three form including its definition and how it acts on vectors to yield the volume spanned by those vectors. It looks at tangent spaces and how these spaces are related to vectors and uh, three forms using pictorial representations to support the ideas covered. All right, I hope all, everyone's well um, and uh, we'll make a start then. All right, so let me hide that. Okay, so a three form on an n-dimensional n-dimensional manifold M is a completely anti-symmetric covariant tensor of rank three in local coordinates x1, x2, xn. A three form omega can be written as omega is sigma ijk omega ijk dxi wedge dxj wedge dxk. Now here the omega ijk are the components of the three form. Now, <clears throat> due to the anti-symmetry of the wedge product, omega ijk satisfies uh, this relation here by changing any two of the indices here. So omega ijk is the negative of omega jik. Notice the i and j have been swapped and the negative of omega ikj. Notice the j and the k have been swapped there. So swapping two indices gives us uh, is results in a sign change. So this anti-symmetry implies that omega i, j, k equals zero if any two indices are the same. As we've seen in the two-form video and the one-form video, of the two-form video, sorry, we've seen and the other video on the wedge product that wherever two indices are the same, the, the wedge product must be zero. So the expression dxi wedge dxj wedge dxk is the wedge products of the basis one forms dxi, dxj, dxk. I should say wedge product, they're singular, um, but uh, they can be used as uh, uh, bases, but we'll get into that another time. All right. Now, so what is this dx, wedge, dy, wedge, dz? Now, hopefully you've looked at the video on the two forms, introduction to two forms and the introduction to one form, okay? Uh, and perhaps also hopefully you've seen the wedge product video as well. Um, so the question is now, uh, what is this wedge product here? What's this? Now in the last video on two forms, um, we found a two form gave us the area of a parallelogram. So you had two vectors, X and Y, and the two form uh, gave us dx wedge dy acting on the vectors x, y is where we found to be dx acting on x, dy acting on y minus the other order, dx acting on y times dy acting on x. So the area of the parallelogram spanned by these two vectors, the signed value of it, the this area here, this wedge product acting on the vectors x, y gives us the area of the parallelogram spanned by these two vectors, but it gives us a signed value because it depends on what orientation you take it in. Okay, x to y is positive, but y to x gives you the negative value of the area, the negative sign of the area. Notice here's our tangent space of the manifold at the point P. Here's our point P, here's our vectors. Okay, this tangent space here, uh, the basis partial partial dx in that direct in the x direction partial partial y in the y coordinate direction okay and dx acting on the vector x gave us this component here a component the x component of the x vector and um, uh, what was the other here dy acting on y so dy acting on the vector y gave us this component of the y vector here and so on, and we're able to calculate the area. So this here gives us a signed value of the area depending on the direction, the orientation of the area you're talking about. So taking it from the x to the y direction gave us a positive sign value of the area of the parallelogram and the opposite direction will get the negative. All right, so that's what we found in the last video. All right, now in this video, Okay, we're going to go from two dimensions now to three. Um, this three form will need three vectors, x, y, and z. So here's our vector x, our vector y, and our vector z. And the three of them together span in R3, as you can see by the axes here, 
at the point P may span a parallelopiped. Okay, and the volume of that, just as we saw with two vectors, with the two form on the previous slide, we got the sign value of the area. Well, this is going to give us the sign value of the volume. Okay, of the volume of this parallelopiped in the tangent space to the manifold at the point P, three vectors together span this parallelopiped. What's its volume? All right, so given x, we have this. It's a vector writing out in terms of basis vectors, partial, partial x, y, z. Okay, then dx, the one form dx acting on the vector x, dx acting on this. As you can see, we get, uh, let's multiply across the, the one form dx here in each of these cases. Now, dx acting on partial, partial x. Well, Kronika Delta says that is one. dx acting in the y direction, in the z direction, zero, according to the Kronika Delta. All right. All right. They're perpendicular, zero. And so we have the x component of the x vector. Okay, that's so what it gives us here, is the, the one form dx acting on the vector x gives us that component of the x vector. And then similarly for the others, we get the same thing. Is dx acting on y, dz acting on z, uh, dx acting on z, dy acting on x gives us this and so on. You can see each of the components. So I'm not going to write this out several times, but it's the same process at work here. All right. So if we had dy acting on x, then dy would be multiplied across here. And the only component we'd fall, pull out is this component, the xy component. Okay. That's the y component of the vector x. And so on for all the others. Okay, so visually that gives us, what does all this result in? Applying this process uh, eight times here, and we get this. Okay, here we go. Um, so let me start here. dx, the one form dx acting on the vector x. Here it is. Here's the vector x. Here's the tip of it. dx acting on x gives us that component of the vector x. That's what the one form has brought out for us, extracted for us. Uh, and then similarly, dx acting on the vector y gives us this one. Um, uh, where's the other one? Uh, dx acting on z, this one here. Okay, so what is the volume of this parallel of prepared? Okay, well, Volume, following on as we did in the last video on two forms, is going to be something like dx wedge dy wedge dz acting on these vectors x, y, z, taking the vectors x, y, z as its argument. And so what, what are the combinations we can have? Well, can we have dx of x, dy of y, dz of z? Okay, then maybe what we can do is write out the same thing, but what we're going to do is just alter two of the vectors. So we might just swap x and y. Okay, so the next one we've got dx, dy, dz, and we've swapped actually the y and z there. So you can see dx, dx, and here instead of dy on y, we have dy on z. We swap the order. So that means we get a sign change here. And we alter. Remember, direction matters. Direction is important. Uh, keep going then. So dx, dy, dz, and all the way along we're going to have dx, dy, dz. The order of the one forms won't change. We're just going to swap the order of the the vectors right so here we're going to have um, instead of xy we'll have yx so that means a sign change minus here we're going to have xy but there's been two changes here the z has moved one spot between those two which would make that negative and then move it one spot again to put it out front negative of the negative becomes positive all right and then similarly here we have dx dy dz again and we have, look at that, there's two changes as well, because instead of x, y, z, we've now got um, x has moved to there, that's one change, so that should make that negative, and then move it again to the end, where it is now, so another change in sign to make that plus. And then similarly here, we can have a look here, we've got dx, dy, dz, so dx, dy, dz for the one forms, and then look at the order of the vectors, completely changed. Now we've got x at the end, 
Y cell in the middle, Z at the front. Okay, so we seem to have here uh, a single change where we're back negative. Okay, we have a negative sign here. Okay, <clears throat> next step then, if we factor out here in the first line, the DXs, DX acting on X, DX acting on X, take that outside, we're left with DY acting on Y and so on. Same over here, so that goes in there. Then we take out the um, dy term here, dy acting on x, dy acting on x, so let's take that out. Uh, and we'll make this a minus. So I'll have to put a minus in here for the second terms there. Then here, uh, dz acting on x, dz acting on x, I'll we'll have to take that out then. We're left with this, okay, and then now, we know from the previous slide, each of these gives us the components of the vector involved. So dx acting on x gave us the x component of the vector x, so that goes there. And we're left with now y, y, z, z, uh, z, y, and y, z. Following the same pattern, dy acting on x gave us x, y, dz acting on x gave us x, z. And similarly for the other components, I won't read through them all. You can see the pattern happening there. Okay, it's looking a bit like a determinant. Okay, it's like we found. That, okay, so let's do that. So what what does this bit in the square brackets look like? Well, it looks like y z minus uh, y z z y. Okay, sorry, y y z z y y z z minus that. So that's the determinant of a matrix with these terms in it, these components in it, these elements in the matrix. Take the determinant of it and we get this object here. Same thing here, we have a minus here, okay? And we take the determinant of a matrix with these elements, gives us this object here. Same thing here, plus XZ, plus XZ. Then take the determinant of a matrix that has these elements in it, and you get this object here. Okay, now these three determinants here give you the determinant of a larger matrix because this is just really an application of Kramer's rule where you're expanding along this column here. So we're going x, x here. So we cross out that row, that column, and we take the determinant of what's left over. Then we're going to pivot on this second element here. That's a minus, second element here, minus. Uh, minus one times the x, y, and we cross out that row and that column, meaning that we have a matrix made up of y, x, z, x, and y, z, z, y. Okay, and we take the determinant of a matrix with those elements to give us this object here, and so on like that. So really then the volume of this three form, dx, dy, dz, in R3, taking as its argument those vectors x, y, and z, gives us the volume of the parallelopiped spanned by those vectors. And here is our determinant here. Determinant of three by three system. All right, so in the last video we found area, of the, the, vector, the span by the vectors. Here we find the volume spanned by the vectors involved. Okay, and our manifold here is R3. Okay, oh, I went too far. Okay, so let's have a look at definition of three form. Formally, if M is a smooth manifold and the tangent space of the manifold at the point P is the tangent space at point P, belongs to M, a three form omega at P, that's important uh, because if we're going to return a scalar here, you'll see why. Omega at P is a map, so omega at P is a map from the tangent space to the real. So omega p, to say that in, in English, you'd say that's omega subscript p is a three form at the point p that takes three vectors from the tangent space at p and maps them to a real number. If we didn't pick a specific point, then this would be a scalar, but we pick a specific point and this uh, then, the coordinates of that point, then turn this into a real number. So after that, for any vectors, x, y, z, belongs to the tangent space of the manifold of P. We have the symmetry property here, you know, uh, altering the order in which we take the vectors, as I was showing you on the previous slide. 
okay, alters the sign of the one form, of the three form, I should say, sorry. Now, this anti-symmetry property means that swapping the order of the input vectors changes the sign of the output scalar. Um, and what else is there? Next bit. Now, consider a three-dimensional Euclidean space R3 with coordinates x, y, z. A common example of a three-form in this space is the volume form, omega, dx, wedge, dy, wedge, dz. This three-form represents the vol oriented volume element, remember, oriented, in R3. The, region, the volume of a region V sub, uh, subset of um, R3 can be computed by integrating this form over V. So the volume V is the integral dx, wedge, dy, wedge, dz. Okay, now consider some uh, uh, three form omega, which has this scalar function of the variables x, y, z out front, dx, wedge, dy, wedge, dz, where f of x, y, z is a scalar function. To compute the integral of this uh, three form over a region v, we have the integral omega over v is the integral of f of x, y, z, dx, wedge, dy, wedge, dz over v. If f of x, y, z is 1, this integral just gives us the volume of the region. Otherwise, you're integrating this scalar function over the region. And now, one of the powerful applications of three forms is in integration. I'm going to pick this up in more detail in later videos. I'm just, just giving a heads up, just pointing in the direction in which we're eventually heading is in integration theory on manifolds. For a three-dimensional manifold M with boundary uh, partial M, Stokes' theorem relates the integral of the exterior derivative of a two-form alpha to the integral of alpha over the boundary. So the integral of the alpha, the exterior derivative of alpha uh, over the manifold is equal to the integral of alpha over the boundary of the manifold. So if omega is a three form, then its exterior derivative, the omega is a four form. Uh, and that's going to be covered in the video on exterior differentiation, uh, which I'll be putting up very shortly. In three dimensions, a three form is a top degree form. So it can be integrated over the entire manifold, omega over m. In R2 with omega equals omega xy dx wedge dy, Uh, omega of xy is omega xy, the components, and then just the um, determinant of the matrix that has these elements in it. Okay, so omega acting on the vectors xy, uh, where omega has these components in front, because remember omega was uh, these components, omega subscript x comma y, dx wedge dy, and then what is the value of that? Well, it's the components times the determinant of the matrix whose elements are made up of these components of the vectors. And similarly in R3, so omega is uh, some three form of the form with these components out front, dx, wedge, dy, wedge, dz. Then omega acting on some given vectors, x, y, z, whatever they are, uh, whatever you're choosing to be, whatever they are in your circumstance, um, will give you then the components out here multiplied by the determinant of the matrix that's made up with the components of the vectors, x, y, z. Okay, so the determinant, the determinant here represents the volume of the parallelopiped in, uh, for a three form, spanned by the vectors x, y, z, and omega x, y, z uh, is the component of the three form in the x, y, z directions. Now this illustrates how three how a three form maps vectors in the tangent space to a real number. Remember, once we have a point p. Encapsulating the idea of measuring a volumetric quantity spanned by the given vectors. Okay, now in Rn, no, you can't see my image there, but it's annoying me on the screen here. Uh, in Rn, with omega equal to these components, dx, wedge, dy, wedge, all the way up to wedge, dn, then uh, Omega acting on the vectors x, y, up to capital N there, will be the components out front and the determinant of that N by N matrix, whose components are the components of the vectors, whose elements, sorry, of the matrix are the components of these individual vectors. Okay, so now, conclusion. Three forms are an essential tool in differential geometry and theoretical physics, providing a framework to integrate over three-dimensional volumes. 
They describe various physical phenomena. Um, their anti-symmetric nature and relation to the wedge product make them a natural extension of the concepts of vectors of one form to higher dimensions. So two forms, three forms are just applications of one forms in, in higher dimensions. And I'll just finish up now with this video here. Uh, this final slide, um, our volume, all right, in R3, dx, wedge, dy, wedge, dz, acting on some vectors x, y, z, totally arbitrary vectors. Okay, it will just be the volume of the parallelopiped spanned by the vectors x, y, and z. Um, it's the signed value of the volume depending on the order in which you take them. Okay, this gives you so the determinant of the matrix. Um, whose elements are in fact the components of the vectors involved. Okay, that will give you the volume of that parallel prepared. A way to sort of see that by making things a little bit easier for us is just imagine X is aligned with the X direction axis, Y is aligned with the Y coordinate axis, Z is aligned with the Z coordinate axis, and then this becomes a rectangular prism depending on what vectors you've chosen, or a cube if they're all the same. And then you can easily just multiply the numbers of the components together and you can see it is the volume for yourself. That's just another way of looking at it. All right, well, I think that is it. We're finished. I hope you find this video useful to you. Um, and um, I look forward to seeing you in the next video, which I think I might just be uploading the exterior differentiation now yeah, that I've um, talked about it. All right, thanks again. Take care, everyone. Have a good day, and uh, I'll see you next time.